ABS or anti-lock braking system is something that almost anyone who drives a modern car relies on almost every day. I wanna see how it works. The idea behind ABS is that the system pumps the brakes for you multiple times per second instead of locking up the wheels like most humans do instinctively. Most of the time, these systems are working without us even knowing it, especially in the newer cars where the resolution's really high. And that is the exact subject that I'm gonna be diving into in this video. With the high-speed camera, I wanna see how these ABS systems work visually. And for this experiment, I'm gonna be using three different cars from three different eras, a 94 Supra, 2006 AMG, and a 2021 Tesla. And that is what we're gonna do right now. Donut Media guys left the lights on. I'm gonna start out doing a test from older to newer. So I'm gonna start out with the 94 Supra, then I'm gonna move to the 2006 AMG and then the Tesla. For the first test, I'm gonna do it while it's still dry. We have a little bit of snow on the ground, but for the most part, it's nice and dry. So I'm gonna start out there in the alley. I'm gonna do about 20, 25 miles per hour and slam on the brakes. Then we're gonna move into two other tests one with ice and hopefully one with snow, just to see what the difference is between these ABS systems, how they work. Let's do the first one, hope for the best, let's go. All right, so we tried our best with that test, but the one thing I noticed is that, yeah, the resolution of this ABS is not as good as I thought it was. The left side is getting more pulses than the right, but I could actually count them. I never paid attention in the past. Let's see what happens with the other cars. For once, the weather was actually right and it started snowing right in the middle of our experiment. This is probably the first time that I'm happy that it snowed because it doesn't snow very often anymore. That means we're not gonna be able to test the Tesla on the dry pavement. We're just gonna have to move right into the snow and ice, but it's perfect timing because that was my next experiment, what the ABS does on ice and on snow and while driving in the snow. This is not a good winter car.
RBS on this Supra was working overtime. I barely had enough traction to drive, let alone stop. So that was 100% ABS. All I did was come up to the spot, slam on the brakes. I overshot it a couple times. That's how little traction I have. Looking at the high speed footage, you can clearly see the pulses of the system when it's working. And I almost feel like this system works better than the Mercedes. Things are getting really interesting now because I thought the pulses were gonna be faster on like snow where I have less traction, but it seems like they're the same frequency as when the pavement is dry. But to me, it looks like somebody's just pumping the brakes and locking them up and then letting up on the brake and pumping it again, sort of slowly. It's not as fast as I thought it was gonna be. I don't think the Tesla does that, but what I'm thinking is it depends how much traction you have. Maybe if it has a little bit more traction, the pulses are longer. Let's pull the Tesla out next, try this test with the Tesla and see what it does. Even though I have summer tires on this thing, it's much better in the snow. Whoa, this car is heavy. Okay, so that was really interesting. I learned a lot more in just that run than all of them combined. I think because it's electric, I could actually hear the brakes working better since I don't have any engine sound or anything. I had way too much faith in the Tesla to stop. I don't know if it's because the car is heavy or what. This car just kept on going, did not want to stop. The ABS was working overtime. The second thing I noticed that was really interesting is I still had steering capability even though I was jamming on the brakes. That's where ABS is beneficial since you have that pulse in between when the wheel is locking up, it rolls. When the wheel rolls, you're able to steer. So that makes a lot of sense. I think I realized why I thought it was pulsing so much faster than it is. It's because I hear all four wheels pulsing at the same time. And if we take the pulses from one wheel and multiply it by four, then it sounds like it's pulsing a lot faster than it is. That makes a lot of sense. And now that we got quite a bit of snow, we're gonna throw down some water, make a nice sheet of ice, do all three of these one more time real quick, just so we can see what happens. Let's do it. Here goes the first test on the ice, which is gonna be the Supra. I think we know more or less how it worked from the previous test, but let's go, see what happens. faster that time and the pulse width was about the same. So let's move on to the next car. Next is gonna be the Mercedes, then the Tesla. The Mercedes, when the wheel locks up, it still allows the wheel to partially rotate. I don't know if that's just coincidence or that's by design, but let's get the Tesla and see if the Tesla does the same thing. You tell me what you think, but I think the Tesla actually had shorter pulses. I really thought that that stuff with the ABS happened way faster than it does. Originally, I wanted to take the cars out and do some really crazy, insane tests, 
But then once I realized that it didn't happen as fast as I thought it did, and then it snowed, I just decided to do the test here. And I'm also trying to burn through these videos faster and catch up on my backlog so I can move on to my newer content. I wanna start doing things that I really wanna do. You might like it, you might not, but if you're like me and you like crazy, I think you're gonna like it. So make sure you subscribe. One thing I do well is diversity. Definitely with any of these videos, don't be shy. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Feel free to speak your mind. And I'll see you in the next one.